Call of Duty is the most consistently popular series of games there currently is. Unless something is releasing from a juggernaut like Rockstar, you can more or less guarantee that Call of Duty is going to be the highest selling game each year, despite always being released at the tail end of the year. This all really took off after Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare released in 2007. While the series had been gaining traction ever since Call of Duty 2 made its console debut as a launch title for the Xbox 360, Modern Warfare was something else. At the time, it was pretty fresh to see a modern shooter that wasn't extremely tactical like Rainbow Six. Combine that with some of the smoothest controls imaginable for the time, a campaign full of strong writing, fantastic set pieces, and multiplayer that included an addictive progression system like we'd never seen, and it's really no wonder Call of Duty became the giant it still is today. It's important to note, by the way, back in 2007, the campaign was still a major part of the experience for most people. While today a large portion of players never even touch the campaign because the multiplayer has overtaken the series, when Call of Duty 4 released, a lot of people still didn't even play games online, so the campaign was largely all they had. The campaigns generally get a bad rap today, with most people arguing that the early ones they played through, like Modern Warfare 1 through 3 and Black Ops 1, were better. Throughout the last month, I played through all 12 Call of Duty campaigns from Modern Warfare forward, on regular difficulty. I figured we could check this out, and see how true it is that the modern ones are supposedly so much worse. Were the early campaigns starting with Call of Duty 4 actually better? Are they worse? How does the series change over time, and what things stay the same? Therefore, for the next 12 days, or back to back if you're watching the final compilation video, we're going to look back at each campaign starting with Modern Warfare, and ending with the new Modern Warfare 2019 to see how they evolved over time. So, now that I've got over 70 hours and 1.1 terabytes of footage of Call of Duty campaigns to push through, Let's begin with the game that started the avalanche, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Modern Warfare surprisingly wasn't the first Call of Duty campaign I myself played. That would be Call of Duty 2, right after I got my 360 in 2007. I don't even remember who I borrowed COD 2 from or why. I enjoyed it, but thought it was pretty standard. So when my little brother and his friend came home with a copy of COD 4 and started playing split screen multiplayer, I initially brushed it off as nothing special. He borrowed it not long after, and since I was the only one with the 360, I was forced to watch him play it in my room. By the end of the training mission, I was already invested. The opening of Call of Duty 4 is still incredibly strong, both as a tutorial to teach players basic controls and set their gameplay expectations, but also as a way to set your tonal expectations. Though still not a tactical shooter, this wasn't going to be your arcadey romp that was so popular at the time. Above all that, the final test in the mission serves as an addictive minigame that drove a large number of people to push for perfection. You just knew you could shave off one more tenth of a second if you just tried a bit harder. As for the rest of the game, well, it's popular for a reason. Modern Warfare was a massive upgrade in presentation compared to what came before, even in its original form. And despite retaining much of the original animation and such, the remaster still looks like a modern game. Though Modern Warfare is linear and often arguably on rails, for the time it had variety. It may not seem like much today, but the simple changes of stacking up behind doors to breach, or putting on silencers and timing shots with your allies, or carrying a wounded soldier as you retreat from an overwhelming force, trying to push through a wall of combatants rushing through a massive smoke screen. These are small alterations to the base mechanics, but it truly does add a lot to the gameplay, particularly since it knows when to quiet down, rather than being bombastic all the time. It even subverted expectations really well for the time, with scenes like the nuke. The quiet moments of reflection elevate the rest of the bigger moments. That's not to say this game holds up perfectly today. I'm sure a lot of people going back to it that never played it before would probably find it boring. 
In many ways, that's only because it was copied so often. The skeleton of modern warfare was taken by all of its competitors and assimilated, though they never did it quite as well. Despite knowing this game like the back of my hand because I played through it so much back in the day, I still feel there are a few objectives that aren't completely clear, particularly if you miss a bit of dialogue during a firefight. There are also still a lot of shooting galleries where it's just sort of a chaotic mess of bullets flying through open areas, and I found that there was way too large of an emphasis on grenades and rockets being spammed in your general direction. Enemy spawns are also tedious if you don't know that they can often effectively be infinite if you don't move forward. The idea is a good one to use sparingly, but in practice it gets old fast. The biggest issue though is the amount of flinch you experience when your character gets shot. I can imagine this isn't as big of a deal if you're playing on PC, but on a controller, the flinch was my largest frustration, because it seems to conflict with the aim assist. You'll get a bead on your target only to get shot right as you were about to take them out. The flinch will drive your aim off right as you shoot, you'll miss, meaning the recoil of your weapon will drive your aim further off, and then because the aim assist and the aim down sights both slow down your ability to correct back to your target, there's a good chance that you'll get shot again right before you've got them in your sights again, repeating the process. This happens quickly, meaning it always feels like if you're just a tiny bit faster you'll get it, but the best course of action is just to duck behind cover and reset, but that's boring and tedious. The idea of flinch is fine, but ultimately I found it incredibly annoying after just an hour, because you never quite know when you're going to get shot, since all of the normal ballistic weapons are hit scan, meaning they don't shoot projectiles but instead as soon as you click, if you're on target you'll hit your enemy on the next frame, it's easy for enemies you're not currently aiming at to knock your aim astray. This unpredictability just isn't my thing, and I'd have much preferred almost any other punishment for getting shot. This could also be what drives me to want to use single shot rifles and shotguns more than other weapon types, since with the single shot rifles I can be more precise at longer ranges and don't have to deal with the recoil of an automatic, and with shotguns I don't even have to aim much at all. The final issue I had with this game came down to the amount of enemies that would end up in last stand after you shoot them, meaning they'll drop to the ground and pull out a pistol to continue shooting you. It's a near constant occurrence here, with probably a good 3 to 4 out of every 5 enemies doing it if you don't either get a headshot, do an extraordinary amount of damage like with a point blank shotgun blast, or use an explosive. When you're killing hundreds and hundreds of enemies over the course of the game, this too gets old. What this illustrates is that most of Call of Duty 4's shortcomings are related to raw mechanical design, rather than the actual structure of the campaign. It comes down to a handful of what I would call quality of life issues that add up, which is a good problem to have all things considered. It's much cheaper and easier to fix something like this than to rebuild an entire level. Make it so that there are a few sections where enemies respawn infinitely, reduce flinch and the chance of last stand, and make the enemies less explosive happy and this game still holds up really well. I mean it still holds up pretty well anyway, but it could be better. The game's also not too much of a commitment either, on regular difficulty it took me just over 4 hours to complete. As it is now though, I'd say Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare is a solid experience. I could recommend it for sure, but only with the understanding that the core mechanics are a little rough by today's standards. I guess we'll see how they improve moving forward.